Hello, I'm Isaac Seegers, the new superintendent of Lebanon City Schools. Welcome to Onward Lebanon, a television show that talks about Lebanon City Schools, our staff, our students, and our programming. Thanks to the Lebanon Channel for having us every month. This will be an ongoing series that we have throughout the school year to talk about Lebanon City Schools and what we have and how you can engage as a community in our school system. I want to start by just saying thank you to the community for the way you've welcomed me and my family. We moved here this summer and have found Lebanon City Schools to be a fantastic community. I told somebody the other day and multiple times, I've never seen so much maroon in my entire life. So the, the support for Lebanon City Schools, their athletic programs, what's going on in this community is, is really palpable and something that uh, we have noticed from the outside coming in. I just want to thank you for the way you support our school system. Beyond just the athletic programs and, and supporting schools in different variety of roles, you know, we want to talk about at Lebanon City Schools the ways that we are united. There's so much going on in the world around us and talks about the ways that we are pulled apart and divided. But one of the focus for this school year is how can we unite around our mission of building community? What brings us together as a district? And one of the things that I've seen as a, as a person coming from the outside and looking in is just a great community that understands the needs of the community, that comes together on a regular basis to celebrate all that's good about Lebanon. And you know, we've enjoyed Third Fridays. We've enjoyed um, Feast and Folly or the Apple Festival and all the things that bring people together in our community. But beyond those events, beyond sporting events, beyond competitions, you know, what really truly unites us as a community and how does our school district play into the community as a large? So I was really excited to see that the mission of building communities was already worked into the fabric of our district, something that's already in place. And so we're going to lean into that this school year. We're going, to, we're going to begin to look at how we are building communities. We're going to focus on areas that um, as we can expand that mission and as a district to build community with um, Lebanon as a whole. And I want to just focus on a few things today as we, as we begin this first episode to cast a vision for what it looks like going forward. First of all, I, I really just want to say that I think some of the things that are already in place and, and around the idea of community are really important. But there's a couple of distinctions that we want to draw. First, first and foremost, one of the things we talked about with our staff on opening day is there's a difference between visibility or presence and engagement. Right? We want to be engaged in the community. As a district, we want to give back. We want to serve our programs, and we're encouraging this of our student programs and athletic teams. How can we be engaged in the community that's given so much to us? Right? Whether it's service in the community, whether it's service to other kids in the district, engagement looks much different than um, visibility or presence. So as a community, we want to ask you the same things. Right? Like Parent-teacher conferences are great. Right? Having parents involved on in those moments throughout the year that we want them to be there. But what does it look like to be engaged? And we're going to work to provide you with some examples of that and, and support you as parents. Right? How, does, how do you engage your kids at home? And some meaningful questions to ask them at the end of their day. If your kids are anything like my kids, what did you do in school today? Uh, we ate lunch and we had recess. Right? Like the things, how do we dive deeper? How do we help support parents and families as they have those discussions? What truly unites us is another discussion that we, we want to continue to have. Right? This mission of building community we believe is really important. But below that, there are, there are sub points and there are things that really flesh that out and, and, and bring, some, bring some depth to that idea of building community. This summer I had a fortunate opportunity of interviewing um, Alex Brunk, our new junior high principal. And as we sat and we discussed um, you know, his vision for, for building culture, and, and making sure that the junior high is a safe and inclusive environment for all students. He, he was talking about a book that he had just recently read. And this book was about leadership and it was about building culture. And it talked about when we have a common set of beliefs, right? Then we, then we can describe what those behaviors will be like. And once we have a common set of beliefs, once we have a set of behaviors that we can agree upon, then people can really truly belong to the organization. And he and I had a great discussion that we really think that that needs to be done in reverse. And, and one of the things we're going to talk about is what does it mean to belong first? How do we provide opportunities for kids that they feel safe and included in the learning environment? That they can come to school and feel like they have advocates, that they can come to school and feel like they have a support system. So we're going to begin by belonging, right? What does it look like to be a warrior? What does it look like to be a part of a community in our buildings? And then once we have kids that feel like they belong, Right? What are the beliefs about education? What are the beliefs about culture and community that we can flesh out and define? 
And then finally, where the rubber meets the road, what does it look like when those beliefs become behaviors? And so those are some things that we're going to be talking about as we, as we begin to strategically look at going forward. How do we belong? What do we believe? And what behaviors are we going to support and reinforce? So that, that gives us a sort of a roadmap for the school year. And what are we looking at as we, as we begin to look forward at Lebanon City Schools? So um, I, I want to take some time this morning to introduce to you our new treasure, Karen Irvin, joining us today. Um, this is another part of those things that we think that as we look forward, right, we talk about belonging and beliefs um, and behaviors, uh, really fits into um, how we operate and run our district as well. And so I want to take some time today to introduce Karen to the district um, and then have some back and forth conversation about um, sort of big picture as we look forward, new superintendent, new treasurer, what's that relationship going to look like? I'm excited to have you on board. Um, this is day two for all of you out there uh, and looking like she began on Friday. We're shooting this on a Monday morning, so uh, nothing like hitting the ground running today. Um, but uh, I, I just want to start with a little bit there and, and talk to you about like what brings you to this position, right? Give us a little bit of background about yourself and public finances, where you're coming to us from, but what brings you to the place that you're applying for this position and, and really um, accepting the role of treasurer CFO for Lebanon City Schools? Sure, so I grew up in Northwest Ohio. Uh, I moved down to Lebanon for my husband and we now have a beautiful daughter who next year will be starting kindergarten. That's and awesome. so the discussion became very real. She's an August birthday. And so we were talking about, do we start her early or not? And we just started looking at the school district. One of the, the great things that drew us here was the school district. And so as we were looking at that, we thought, well, Lebanon's the place to be. We moved here and I found a community that I love. I've heard nothing but positive about the school district. I live in a local community here in Lebanon and I just have such a positive outlook of both the city and the school district that as I was thinking about my daughter starting school, I thought this is the absolute perfect time for me to give back, build into her community, uh, and not just for her sake, but for all the kids that this district supports. And I'm so excited to be a part and to join this the school district. So you're coming to us from uh, the city of Monroe, uh, yes. public background, public finance background. Um, you know, talk to us a little bit about those experience in public finance and how that maybe translates into school uh, treasure. Sure. So I started in public finance in my old hometown, uh, became the finance director there moved, like I said, for my husband, I, I shifted to the Auditor of State's office, moved to Southwest Ohio. In that role, I worked with school districts and municipalities, both in building financials, analyzing financials. So I had a little bit of exposure there to both situations, ended up moving back into a, a municipality. And what I found in my years, there's so much value in public finance because we're not just there to make a profit. We are there to build a community. We're there to build the, the needs, to meet the needs and services that our constituents are looking for, that the community is looking for. Uh, and so I found something that I love. I don't think I could ever go back to private ha having the same outlook just because public is such a service focused. We do so much good. And so in my years, I, I've been in public finance now over 10 years, and I've done a lot with budgeting, taxes, uh, using limited resources for a lot of different resource uh, needs. So I, I think what, what we'll find, I hope what we'll find is that all my experience, though not directly school related, will translate very seamlessly as we have a very similar mission, is just meeting the needs of the community that we live in. And we're all funded similarly. We're, there, yes. there are different things in place there that make it very a real connection between those. Um, what uh, what drew you and your husband? You talked about that a little bit with your daughter and the the school community. But you know, one of the questions I have for you, um, and uh, you know, as a resident, you've lived in Lebanon for several years now. Um, you're a taxpayer in the community. You, know, you you've had an outside look um, at Lebanon City Schools. Is there anything that you you know as residents that maybe could resonate with that? Like, what are your thoughts um, as you look? from the outside in at Lebanon in terms of how things are um, funded, operating, um, you know, anything in that regard that you think is worthy of uh, discussion today? Sure. So, uh, like I said, moving in from Northwest Ohio, it's a very different atmosphere um, in Northern Ohio than Southern, but then you get to Lebanon and it's 
that is different from the rest of Southwest Ohio. And so just moving in, I, I told my husband probably a year in, I didn't know I could love living in a place. And I just get the same perspective from, I, like I mentioned, I live in a local community from a lot of the parents. Just love the school district. A lot of parents moving in because of the school district. Um, I, I have not seen anything negative come out. And even financially, I know the community has been so supportive. Even you, you drive through the town and you see the signs. And in my neighborhood, you see the Facebook posts saying, support this levy. And we're so appreciative. And I know coming in, into this role, I will be very appreciative as well as community continues to support because what we value is our kids. And so that support from our community, has, it's just overarching. It's, it's rare yeah. nowadays. And I think Lebanon is very blessed with that. Um, as I move forward, of course, we're, we're gonna start taking a look at, do those meet our needs and how do they meet our needs? So uh, one of the big things, and I know we'll get there, but one of the big things I wanna look at is making sure the community understands how we are using those resources. Not just that we are, but that making sure that they understand the story behind the dollar signs. Yeah, I think it's really important that we communicate um, as central office, as, as a district, um, not when, not just at tax time, right? Not just right. at levy time. Um, you know, one of the things I think is special about this, as a person coming from the outside in, as well, is just the connection between the school and the community, right? That um, that they're woven together in those ways. That, the downtown gets closed down for a homecoming parade, right? Like those, right. those are things that happen in small towns um, and I think are special about Lebanon as well. And so uh, both of us coming from the outside and looking at this, um, those are things that drew my family here as well um, when we looked at that decision. Um, do you have any priorities as you begin? You know, this is day two we've talked about, right? So you haven't had a chance to dig into everything so <laughs> far, but what are some priorities you'd like to address in the first year? What's some goals that you have set out? One of the first things I want to take a look at is really understanding the full budget. What do our dollars go towards and do those work efficiently, effectively? Um, from a treasurer's perspective, fiscal responsibility is top priority. So we want to make sure to take a look at where our dollars are spent. And then I know we have several property tax levies that we're going to need to take a look at in the next couple of years. I mentioned the community has been very supportive and so we want to make sure to continue that but be responsible with how we do that. So I'll be working with the counties, with Warren County, to make sure that we're doing appropriate actions with our property taxes. And then the last one I mentioned already, but I wanna make sure that the community understands financial transparency, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and the story behind what those dollars are going for. Have you thought at all about how you, that information could be shared? Um, is there something that they can look forward to seeing out of the treasurer's office going forward? Absolutely. So my goal will be to take a look at what is currently being shared. But there are easy things that we uh, that I've done in city life, just making a budget document or making a website that shares, here are our priorities for this year. This is the funding that can go towards that. And this is how it helped. This is how it worked. Uh, I'm sure we will have times where it doesn't work. And so I think it's very important to share those with the community as well. We tried this, but it didn't work, so we're gonna reallocate in this way. So documentation is gonna be key, communication is gonna be key. And certainly if parents and community members have questions, being open to those questions and being able to share the real true story behind those, those uh, the lack of information that they're seeking. Yeah. I think that's really important for us to be transparent. You know, one of the things that um, I recognize about Lebanon City Schools is like, they have done a really good job being good stewards of the taxpayer dollars, right? Um, spending money wisely um, and making sure that we're not overspending in areas. Um, and so I think that to tell that story about how we've done a good job, but also then to look at like, if we want to do more, what is it going to take? Um, Absolutely. Are we within those uh, reach of that now, or is it gonna take more? And I think that's where you know the partnership between our offices is gonna be really important to make yes. sure that the finances match up with the educational you know, vision and mission of what we're trying to Absolutely. do. Absolutely, and yeah. ultimately we're here to build the community as the community needs, yeah. right? And so making sure that we use those, those dollars to build what the community needs. Yeah. Um, so our mission is building community. Are there specific areas in your department um, as you plan for this position where you see school finances connecting to that mission of building community? I think everything we do in the treasurer's office 
supports that. If we don't spend money, we can't build community. But also if we spend money irresponsibly, we can't build community properly. And so everything that we do is going to really revolve around this concept of building community, whether that's setting priorities, whether that's establishing budget, um, whether that is simply I talk to parents, right? Or I talk to community members. Uh, local support has been amazing here, not even as in this role, I've seen the support of the community with the school district. And so continuing that is gonna be vital in both maintaining our current resources and building the community and, the, and meeting the needs of the students here at the district. Yeah. Yeah, one of the other things we're gonna talk about today in this episode is a partnership with the Port Authority here in uh, Warren County. They provided us with a, with a large grant. And I think that goes to speaking for us setting a vision uh, for, for a program and then being creative to find ways to help fund that. And so I think that fits in with you know, fiscal stewardship um, and making sure that it's responsible. You know, one of the things I think our board did a great job of as they sought to find uh, the superintendent and the treasurer uh, in the past six months is really engaging with um, the community, some stakeholders, some groups of people. Um, you know, there's a budget finance committee that, um, that Mr. Sotsing used to meet with on a regular basis, and they engaged them to find out what are some priorities for a new treasurer position, um, and how do we begin to move forward. I think that's another great example of how, where the leadership at the very top level is seeking input. Yes. Um, and, and casting a vision for, um, you know, what is it going to look like as we move forward. And so I'm excited. I think this is a very exciting time for us at Lebanon City Schools um, to, to, be able to work together, uh, to be able to look at things in, in fresh set of eyes, and to be able to say, there's some good things in place we want to continue to do, and yes. then some put some processes in place for how change may be happening going forward. Absolutely. Anything else this morning you'd like to share with us? I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to meet the, the constituents a little bit, and I hope if anyone has any questions, they feel free to reach out to us. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Karen. Thank you. One of the things we want to talk about is how we celebrate successes and how we celebrate programs. So as we look at this idea of building community, we're taking something that has been in place for a while. And we're going to we're going to rebrand it this year. And so um, our student and staff of the quarter is an example of something where it started with a way of recognizing students and staff members that have gone above and beyond. And, and that may just be in the classroom, maybe with discipline. But one of the things we're going to do this year is we're rebranding that to the community builders. Um, awards program and so recognizing students and staff members each quarter that have gone above and beyond they've served their community in some way they've they've reached out to those that are on the outside maybe and connected with them and so you'll be seeing these signs pop up around town right what gets promoted gets completed um, is a big belief uh, of mine and so we're going to celebrate some of these successes along the way we're going to talk about these things as they happen so I hope that you'll look for uh, the signs that are begin to pop up in people's yards and you begin to ask them right like what did you do right to, what did you do to be recognized for this because I think um, we want to celebrate that in our community we want to make sure that that's something uh, that is carried forward a huge thanks to Wits Frozen Custard for sponsoring that new program um, and the belief in building community with us as a school district. We'll be right back after the commercials and we'll be looking at some student programs at Lebanon High School that exemplify this building community. Some things in your medicine cabinet are more dangerous than others. When it comes to prescription drugs, opioid pain medicines can be addictive and even deadly. Half the people who misuse prescription pain medicines get them from a friend or family member. Be part of the solution. Go through your medicine cabinets, drawers, anywhere you keep unused opioid pills, patches, or syrups. Find out how to dispose of them safely. Visit fda.gov slash drug disposal. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what 
what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Welcome back to Onward Lebanon, our show designed to provide viewers with an insight into Lebanon City Schools, our students, our staff, and our programming. I want to welcome to the show today two ladies that I've been blessed to meet in the first two months on the job, Bunny Brooks and Jen Coleman. Welcome to the show. Um, we want to talk today a little bit about uh, your programming at Lebanon High School. I believe it's a great example of what we've been trying to discuss uh, about Lebanon City Schools being ambassadors um, into our community, making connections and building community out, out, out in the community. So um, welcome, Bunny, and welcome, Jen. Thanks for being here today with us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, another aspect and a goal of building community, uh, and one of the things that's listed on our master planning as a district, um, and I want to read this directly from um, our website, strengthen the Lebanon City and Warren County communities as we prepare graduates for careers in college. We want to partner with community leaders, nonprofit organizations, business owners, and area colleges and universities. I thought that fit perfectly into what you're doing in your career experience as classroom. So um, just want to start with Bunny. Can you explain um, the bit of your vision as you began to create this program several years ago? Um, what was this birthed out of? And talk to us a little bit about um, the purpose for this program. Um, really quickly, um, I've been at Lebanon schools for a very long time and I used to create, I used to teach the career and college readiness program, which also did ACT prep. And in that time, I would sit down and talk with students, and it actually started with John Boyer. Um, he is now a um, community member. Um, and so he wanted to get into some experiences of engineering, but he, he didn't have that personal experience to make sure that this was the correct pathway. So we contacted um, FECON, and FECON graciously took him for a summer internship, and this has to be 10 years ago. And that was a, such a success and helped John. Um, and so, you know, we started helping students individually, and then the concept of a class came about. So it really is derived from, you know, helping our kids have the pathway, the correct pathway, the career pathway that they want for their passion. So it's very individualized. So do you see this as something that is that can be replicated and, and taken out beyond your classroom? Like you're traditionally a family consumer science teacher, right? Yes, sir. Um, old school home economics, right? Like so this is the new wave of what that looks like or I was Yes, I, and not to interrupt. Yes, I would agree with you. I think this is an opportunity for our kids to get hands-on experiences and make sure that this is what they want. Um, so we have lots of examples of students trying something going, that's not what I thought it would be. And then finding something they really want to do before they spend a year in college doing career exploration as a freshman somewhere. Yeah, getting them hooked up with something early mm -hmm. on is really important mm -hmm. to, to learn that. Sometimes it's best to learn what you don't want to do. Right? as opposed to what you want to do. Yes, um, we agree with that completely. <laughs> yeah, I remember a high school experience I had. I thought I wanted to be an engineer, and I got into that experience. I thought, this is not what I want to do with my life, and that mm -hmm. really changed the tra trajectory for me. So, Jen, I want to ask you a question. Um, you're new to this program, new this year to the high school. What Correct. drew you uh, to Lebanon High School specifically for this program? So I've been an elementary teacher for 21 years, um, and if you would have asked me, I never would have thought I would teach high school. Um, I actually have done the teacher academy for years. I have um, had Mrs. Brooks's kids for years, and I love talking to the high school kids. So at one point last year, I had six kids in my class per week. Um, my high school kids were shadowing and you know working on tutoring and things like that, and I just loved it. Um, so when I found out that the position was gonna become available, um, I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. What do I have to do to become this person and this career's experienced teacher? Um, so I actually have a new certification um, and I'm gonna do some other courses. I, I have three years to, to work on the courses um, and I just believe in the program. And that's when I interviewed and I had to interview after 21 years Man. and make my own resume. And um, I had to say, you know, I love Mrs. Brooks dearly, but I believe in the program. So even if she were to leave, I want to make sure the program is successful and continues the way that she has created it. So um, I've learned a lot from her already and trying to get in her brain and figure out what needs to come next. Um, so it's been a great experience for us already this quarter. Um, we've known each other for a very long time. So that obviously drew me to the program that 
wow, I get to team teach with my mentor, you know? And um, so the classes were just something extra that, wow, oh, ab absolutely, I will do whatever I can to be part of this program. And a couple of things I've learned, uh, you were actually her high school softball coach. Is that a true Volleyball statement? Coach. Volleyball coach. coach. Correct. Um, one of those things that's kind of cool to think about relationships that yes. establish uh, that we have the ability as teachers to build relationships that, that carry through a lifetime um, mm -hmm. and in some circumstances. Great example of of what that looks like to build relationships and rapport with kids. Yeah. Um, so she was my high school teacher and my high school coach, and now I've come full circle back around to teach with her. And when we tell the kids, you know, they laugh, but really, you know, we say um, our slogan is kind of one handshake for the rest of your life. You know, that handshake is gonna make you a connection for the rest of your life, even if it's 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and look at us. I mean, we've come full circle to come back to Team Teach together now. That's awesome. So one of the things that we also talk with our students about on a regular basis is like being lifelong learners mm -hmm. um, and, and pursuing new things. And so both of you yes. have had to pursue something um, as a result of this program. I just want to touch Correct. base on that. Your new credential, um, going from elementary to family consumer science, what yes. is that? So I have a K through eight elementary degree, and then I have a K through 12 masters. Um, and I took the test for the FCS endorsement, and then okay. I will also take some methods classes in the next couple of years. Um, so for me, I'm a lifelong learner. This is this is great for me. I love it. I love to take classes. I'm one of those crazy people that loves school, so um, I don't mind you know doing that. I was going to take something anyway because I'm such a learner. So now I just get to take some extra things, and I'm learning a lot more about the economics piece of the um, family consumer science and the budgeting and um, those things that I'm also teaching with the kids. So but beyond the careers, we're teaching them a lot more professional skills and lifelong skills. And so at the end of your teaching career, you went back and you've become credentialed as an STNA. Is that a true statement? That is correct. <laughs> um, we, we both believe that we don't ask our students to do anything we haven't done. So hmm. we have gone back and we got 10 additional credentials in the last two years um, in everything from Control the Bleed to STNA. STNA is the State Tested Nurses Aid. And we have 15 students um, doing this credential starting today. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. That's what you told me on the way in today. You're excited. They're getting out and and to see that firsthand. And um, mm -hmm. I know you're you're excited to go check in on them. So we, we'll try to keep this short today in terms <laughs> of our <you>. conversation. <laughs> um, so just give us an idea of um, how many students are in the programs and um, you know the growth that we've seen in the last couple of years. All right. Um, the first year was 2018, and we had approximately 60 students, 30 each term. Some of the students repeated. Um, and then we had COVID, so that kind of messed everything up. And this year, first semester, we're around 32. Next semester, we have somewhere between 50 and 60 students signed up. Um, and it's great because this, the businesses have been awesome, the families have been great, the kids are excited because they're getting to have real world experiences. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you share, uh, does it, do you, do either one of you have a story about a success story or a student experience that you think exemplifies what you're talking about in the program? Mm -hmm. um, the best example, and I talked to her um, just a couple weeks ago, Maddie Borb, one of our local citizens, um, she was in our class the first year and she said she wanted to be a dog groomer. And I'm like, awesome, we'll figure it out. So we got her at Denise's here in Lebanon and she did dog grooming for four weeks and we sat down and we talked and we talked and she came back at the end of the four weeks and said, I don't want to be a dog groomer. <laughs> I'm like, so what do you want to do? She goes, I think I want to work with people. And so we got her into one of the local full service salons um, and she got to see all the areas, pedicure, manicure, uh, esthetist, hairstylist, manicurist, and did them all. And after the two weeks, she came back, said, this is it. This is what I want to do. And then we helped her find her school and hooked her up for day visits with Aveda. And she now owns a business in Lebanon. Yeah. And she owns her own chair right around the corner. <laughs> um, and she started her own business in December. And so she is working and a business person in our community. Mm -hmm. So that to me is like so exciting. Yeah, and yeah. That, that exemplifies what you're trying to do, keep Lebanon mm -hmm. talent local, right? Yes, like, right. Um, train Keeping these kids yes. and providing them with opportunities that they can invest back into the community at which has given so much to them. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great partnership. So another story that we have, and, and our kids, um, when they come in, they, they have that kind of top five of what they want. And it can be anywhere from teacher, veterinarian, hospital, hairstylist, all kinds of things. So we direct them and say, well, let's try three weeks of this. Let's try three weeks of this. Let's try three weeks of this. If they enjoy that path, they continue on that path. If they don't, like you said, you've got to find out what you don't like. Yeah. So we want them to try different things. So we had a student last year that was construction and you know one of our big macho football players um, and he actually went to shadow with my husband at Four Paws. Um, I also am a business owner at Four Paws Animal Hospital um, and you should see him with the kittens and the dogs and the puppies and everything else and he now wants to become a veterinarian. <laughs> so he went through a lot of things that he thought he wanted and then ended up finding something he really likes and now he is at UC Blue Ash doing some of the vet tech classes and um, still works at Four Paws Animal Hospital. So you know, we want those kids to have all those experiences. Even if you don't know, we want you to know, this is not for me, this is not for me, this is not for me, and then go to find something that they do like. So we have kids going from engineering to architecture to hairstylist to tattoo artist. We have kids in the hospital doing STNA. Um, so it's a big puzzle piece, trying to fit all 32 kids into three or four different careers in the semester that we have them. So we give them those professional skills first and they have to learn how to be an employee and then they get to go out and send their resumes and meet their employer and interview and then go to these different places. So, so we have lots of success stories that have really, that's what this is really about. We wanna see where they end up you know, after our class and what they've learned from it. And I think back to our first visit early in August um, you guys shared this program with me and I sat in my office and I'm like, we've got to tell this story. Like, this is a great thing that Lebanon City Schools has for our students. Uh, I want to see this program grow, mm -hmm. um, it, but also just begin to let people know the great things that are happening at Lebanon City Schools. And, um, and, and as, we look, as we look at how we're building community, as we look at how we're engaging with our workforce, with colleges um, and, and community members, you know, one of these things that I, I wanted to ask you before, um, you know, before we wrap this up today is, first of all, um, can you take a little bit of time to share with us the Port Authority grant? Mm -hmm. um, and then the last question, maybe Jen, would be like, um, what do we need going forward, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have some funding uh, established for the year, but what are we looking for that if there's viewers at home um, that they can say, I want to be a part of that, mm -hmm. um, what are some things we still need? Well, first off, we're extremely grateful. One of the key things that we wanted to get to when we started this program was to get the kids, um, our students, um, employable credentials, industry-recognized credentials. So not only do all of our students do control the bleed, we have some that will be working in, at Warren County Career Center in logistics. We have some at Warren County Career Center doing the STNA. And those are industry recognized credentials that our community employers need um, and our kids need to start their career. Um, those, those are not inexpensive. Yeah. And we wrote a proposal to the Port Authority last um, March and then in May, they awarded Lebanon City Schools $57,000 to cover the expenses for our students and our families. So our STNA people and our logistic people and control the bleed people and the other credentials we hope to bring in um, is funded um, to allow our students that opportunity without burdening the families. And so that is, it's, just an awesome, awesome feeling to have our community not only support us with helping experiences for our kids, but helping our community support um, these programs. So all these kids um, have job offers on the table wow. from local communities, um, from living centers to the hospitals in the Warren County area. Um, and they will be able to go and go to school part-time or full-time and work part-time and having a professional beginning. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we still need as we look to the future and grow in this program, or um, are there businesses specifically that that um, you know we're looking for partnerships with? We're always looking for partnerships, and um, we go to a lot of the chamber meetings. We support the Lebanon Chamber of Commerce a lot, and they have in turn helped us find some people that do a lot of different things. Um, like I said, we go from anywhere from doctors, engineers, architects to tattoo artists to hairstylists. 
Um, we, like Mrs. Brooks said, we want the kids to have a professional career coming out. We want to give them a chance to know, I can do this and get a license. I can do this and get a certificate. I can do this and get a two-year degree, a four-year degree. We want to give them all those opportunities. Then if they go back full-time, part-time, whatever it is, there's, there's, there's a reason for them to be able to mm -hmm. have that. Um, so any businesses that are available and um, it's just a shadowing position at this point. You know, we, we call it career experience because everyone's different in their experience. Some are shadowing, some are interning, some have full-time jobs on the table already. Um, we want to give them that chance. So any businesses that are available um, and have something that they would like the kids to see, we're more than welcome to, to take that in. Um, like we said, keeping local talent local. We want our kids to know they have such an opportunity here. They don't have to go very far to find all the things that they need. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, you know, you had that little bit of experience with engineering and you knew that wasn't for you. Yeah. You know, that's what we want the kids to be able to see is this mm -hmm. isn't for me, this is for me. I'm going to try this and this before I go pay a lot of money for a degree, for a certificate, for a license. Mm -hmm. um, and we're both great examples of you can change throughout your career. So we want them to be able to see all of those things. So anyone that's available, um, we're, you know, we're always looking for other contacts and that's what we tell the kids, you know, does anybody know a person that does this? So does anybody have a connection to this? That's the way the real world works and we want yeah. them to see that. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for being with us today. Thank you for being ambassadors for Lebanon City Schools and going out there and promoting this great program. Um, I think it's extremely important as we look at um, you know, establishing or reestablishing this building communities uh, aspect of what we do, that we, we focus on areas and programs like this that celebrate the successes that our kids are having, but Lebanon City Schools is having as well. So thank you for your commitment to this. I want to thank all of you for being with us today on Onward Lebanon um, on the Lebanon channel. It's been a great opportunity for us to share the vision of where we're going in Lebanon City Schools. As we focus on building community and the mission of everything that we do, we're going to take some time each month to focus on student groups and programs that are living into that mission, that are engaging with our communities. I want to encourage you as families to engage. Engage with your kids, engage with your staff members, engage with the community and the schools. Um, visibility and, and presence are important, right? That's a great place to start, just being there. But engagement takes things to the next level. And so as we live into this mission of building community, we want to thank you for your partnerships. Thank you for allowing us uh, to have your kids every day. Right? We take that uh, very seriously at Lebanon City Schools. And we want to thank you for your time today on Onward Lebanon.